In today's video, we're gonna go over some interesting new Blender add-ons and some updates. Add-ons for physics simulations, modeling, sculpting, cameras, and some add-ons for random problems that can save your sanity. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're gonna start with V-Dynamics, which is an add-on that introduces elastic body simulation into Blender with a setup that is surprisingly hands-on but not overly complicated. You start by assigning simulation rules. You will set your active objects as elastic bodies and mark any surfaces or obstacles as colliders. There is a batch assignment option too, which helps when you are working with large collections of assets. Before running the simulation, you can animate the colliders to interact with the elastic bodies, say walls compressing a pile of objects, then trigger the simulation through an external window it saves the data as a USD file and calculates everything in the background. And you can watch the result live in Blender once it is done. The squashing and bouncing effects feel solid, especially for stylized motion or quick soft body previews. You don't need a deep rigging setup to get convincing elasticity, which makes it a nice tool for experimenting with dynamic scenes in a more physical way. And hopefully it will get better in future updates. Talking about updates, Solidify Plus just got updated. This add-on builds on Blender's native Solidify modifier, but with far more control over rim loops, creasing, and profile shaping. You can now adjust the number of rim loops and define exactly where creasing happens, inner, outer, or only on the convex and concave edges. There is even vertex level precision, if you need that. The updated version introduces an inset option in the free tier. And for the paid version, there is now an even offset toggle for more predictable rim profiles. The curve profile feature also got improved. The first and last points of your custom curve now influence the entire extrusion. And there is a new custom normal mode for more consistent shading across complex extrusions. You can apply it directly from the modifier dropdown or through the asset browser. The bevel and subdivision modifiers work essentially well with it, giving you non-destructive modeling options which are ideal for hard surface work, in addition to stylized shapes or anything that benefits from clean control over thickness and edge flow. Blender sometimes doesn't really work nicely with some important object's rotation, but Orientation Fixer can solve that by simply selecting a face or multiple faces if needed. Right-click and hit Fix Orientation, and voila! The object axis get aligned based on your selection. You will find it sitting in the right-click context menu in the edit mode, so it is quick to access and does the job without getting in the way. Also, there is a 10% discount code available in the description. If you're looking to grab it or some other tools from the same developer, it is valid until the end of the month, May 31st. Also, as you may know, Blender usually limits you to sculpting one object at a time which can be a pain when working on character made of multiple parts. But the multi-sculpt add-on can solve that by creating a temporary combined mesh from your selected objects. So you can sculpt on that proxy as if it is a single object, and then the add-on transfers the changes back to the originals. Modifiers, UVs, multi-res, materials, even shape keys and vertex colors stay intact. So there is no need to merge anything or apply destructive changes. It also handles extras like vertex painting and white painting on the proxy, and it skips non meshes automatically. From what I can see, sculpting performance holds up well, unless you are doing something that changes topology. For those of you working with stylized characters or tune shading, Easy Custom Normals is a free tool that fixes ugly shading on uneven or triangulated meshes, something that often breaks tune shading. Standard solutions like blur, smooth modifiers, or data transfers don't help because they rely on vertex positions. But this add-on uses Laplacian smoothing and inverted area weight normals to give clean results even on messy topology. It is non-destructive and built on geometry nodes and works well with vertex groups in addition to attributes and shaders. You can preview normals live and even bake them. It is already solid for stylized characters especially for those that don't follow the high tool of poly baking workflow, and it can handle poles, triangles, and even spacing much better than Blender's built-in tools. 
According to the developer, more tools are coming in the future, but even now, it solves one of the biggest headaches in stylized shading, and again, it is free. If you've heard about Begapi, you probably already know it is great for procedural modeling and scattering. They have just released Begapi 11, and it builds on that foundation by adding new parametric tools that work directly in object mode, like turning faces into patterns or creating arrays along shapes without having to deal with nodes. They also have new cable and bolt corner generators, which add practical options for environment details and hard surface modeling. When it comes to the edit mode, the update introduces features that make architectural blocking way better. You can now turn your selected faces into objects like doors and windows, saving time on setup. Scattering also has been refined, with new presets and assets included, in addition to the ability to scatter directly from the asset browser, fitting more naturally into Blender's workflow. The group system also has seen some improvements, allowing conversion of groups into instances to help with performance. And the nose to panel system has been refined for easier management of complex setups. Now let's talk about a new add-on called FlexCam, which turns your static camera into a dynamic tracking system. It automatically adjusts camera's position, rotation, and zooming to keep your subject framed perfectly. Whether it is moving quickly or firing or whatever, to use it, simply add a tracker to your object and select a camera. FlexCam will take over the tracking, adjusting movement, damping, and lens properties, like dynamic field of view for smooth zooming. You can also enable curve mode to have the camera follow a path or just position offsets for specific changes. In addition, it allows you to track multiple subjects at once, making it great for complex scenes. Now we're going to talk about a new add-on called Cuts Tools, which is a non-destructive hard surface modeling add-on. Simply put, it can help you streamline your workflow, but how does it do it? You can mark edge cuts, clear them, and toggle between the two, making the whole process seamless and efficient. It allows real-time adjustments for cut thickness in addition to chamfer details, and it can even control the chamfer's width and profiles using hotkeys. You can create or clear cuts with Shift plus Q, and tweak parameters like thickness with control and mouse movements, or adjust the chamfer profile by holding P. The add-on also features advanced options for bevel limits, such as angle and weight methods, and it gives you the ability to control the inner chamfer mode for sharper or smoother edges. Once you are done, just apply the modifiers, and your cuts become individual objects. There is also a new add-on called Blender AI Assistant, which is designed to enhance your workflow by integrating AI-powered tools directly into Blender. Once installed, it provides access to over 20 AI models that can assist with various tasks, like generating code, creating 4K assets, and offering expectations for shader nodes. But you have to try it for yourself. You can create custom prompts to automate tasks, generate Python scripts tailored for Blender's API, or introduce assets like images, textures, decals, and SDRIs. In addition, right-clicking on any node or object allows you to receive AI-powered explanations. Next, we're going to talk about Realistic Skies, which offers a collection of 8K background images organized into 11 categories, which provides various moods and lighting options. These backgrounds are great for quickly adding realistic environments to your Blender scenes, thanks to seamless integration with the asset browser. You don't need an add-on actually to use them. Simply drag and drop the backgrounds into your scene, then adjust the images to fit your camera view. Each image includes a dedicated node group, making it easy to adjust brightness in addition to contrast, saturation, gamma, and hue without affecting your scene's lighting or casting unwanted shadows. These images are designed to be adaptable to different formats, from ultra-wide to standard, making them a versatile option for any project. Last but not least, we're going to talk about ModStack, which takes some of the repetitions out of working with modifiers. Normally, Blender doesn't let you save modifier setups, so you end up rebuilding the same stacks over and over. But ModStack fixes that by letting you save and reuse entire modifier setups across any project. Once installed, you can get a new menu modifier. From there, 
you can save the current tag on your selected object, give it a name and an icon if you want, and it is stored as a preset. You can then load any of your saved presets. If you tweak a preset, say for example changing a bevel amount or subdivision level, you can override it instead of starting from scratch. There is also a reset manager where you can organize, rename, change icons, or delete presets. And for quick access, you can mark up to 8 of your favorites to be easily accessible through the Pi menu in the viewport. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in one of these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.